Hey guys, in this video I want to share with you a little fun project I've been working on tonight. It's super easy, but uh, it's something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while now, and it's basically being able to power any radar detector off of a battery pack. And uh, now this way, instead of having your detector being tied to your car and only being able to use it in your vehicle, you can take it out. If you're kind of crazy like I am, you want to take it out running or just anything when you're not in your car and you'd like to be able to use a radar detector, uh, powered off a mobile battery, a battery source, uh, it's actually really easy to do. There's a bunch of ways of doing it. I actually put up a question up on uh, RDF asking for the best ways of doing it. I've got a bunch of really good suggestions. Uh, the way that I want to do it, um, I've got a whole bunch of different uh, USB battery packs like this. So USB ports, big battery pack, charge it up. And I wanted a way to basically plug in my radar detector um, to the battery pack. Now obviously it's not the right connector, so you've got to do something. And at the heart of what we're doing is this converter right here. Um, we need this for two reasons. Number one, we got to change the connections from USB over here to the cigarette lighter there. And we can't plug it in directly. And the reason is, uh, the battery pack that I have puts out 5 volts. Radar detectors, uh, they need about 12 to 13 volts. That's typically what your car is going to be putting out. So, you need some way to convert the 5 volts from the USB battery pack that I happen to use up to the 12 volts that the radar detector needs. And the way to do that is to get a DC to DC converter that uh, will step up your voltage. And I got one here, it was like 10 bucks on Amazon, suggested to me on RDF, uh, picked it up and it does the job perfectly. It's super easy to use, there's no soldering required. Um, it's awesome. So here's how it works. Uh, basically what I did, let me just walk you through the whole process from start to finish. So uh, we'll go ahead and just turn this off real quick. We've got our USB battery pack, USB ports. Um, I grabbed an extra USB cable and uh, just kind of lopped off the end. You can see it right here. Uh, lopped off the end and then uh, took the cables and stripped them down. Got a wire stripper. Awesome. Pretty simple and self-explanatory. We need our positive and ground and, uh, you know, red and black in this case have to be positive and ground and I just confirmed it with a, uh, a multimeter. Grabbed a multimeter. Uh, they plug into right here. Um, and there's actually, this is the awesome part. Remember how I mentioned there's no soldering required? You just take the exposed wires and they plug right into there. They just kind of slide in. And you take a little Phillips screwdriver and you just tighten those down and they just clamp down on the exposed wire. So super easy. You can easily swap in other devices, um, other cables. If I want to maybe use a different cable or a longer or shorter one or whatever, super easy to do. It's awesome. I don't have to pull out my soldering iron, which I didn't realize at first. I got it all set up and then, oh, don't need it. Awesome. So anyways, take your Phillips screwdriver, um, USB cable, whatever donor one you want to use, uh, positive and negative. You can see in plus and in negative. So you're in, you know, power and ground. Um, and then once we power it up, go ahead and plug it in. We'll do this. So uh, the way this guy works, it's super, super easy. Um, we've got our power inputs and we've got our outputs right there. So if you take a look at it, you can see out plus and out minus. So ground, power. Cool. Okay, there's a little button right here, but you can press that and it'll switch between your input voltage, which is whatever this guy is giving you, and then your output voltage. Uh, which is whatever you set it to. And to set it, there's a little uh, screw right there, and you can just take a little flathead screwdriver and turn it and change whatever the output voltage is. Oops, plate back up. All right, is it this guy? Turn off. There we go. All right, so let's do this. So you can see we can just uh, change this dial, and it'll adjust what our output is. We can turn it down if we want. Uh, I hope that's showing up OK on camera. 9.8 volts. You can crank it up. I think it supports up to like 30 something volts. We don't need that high, the one that I got. Um, I'm just going to run it around 12 or 13, like see if we can crank it up. We can go super, super high if we want. Let's see what the max is. I don't even know. 39.9. So this thing supports up to 40 volts. Okay. And then I think up to 2.5 amps. They've got another one that supports up to 6 amps, but I don't need that much power. So, anyways. Uh, a car's battery puts out about 12 amps, or 12 volts. Um, when you're running on your alternator, you're a little over 13 or so. So I'll just set it to that range, and that works fine. Now, according to the manual, the V1 can accept just a sample detector. Uh, 11 to 16 volts. So we'll just do that. 13.3. Cool. Why not? So this guy can accept anywhere from 11 to 16, and it's comfortable with that. So I'll put it right around where an alternator would be. So 13.3. Awesome. Anyways, really simple. We've got our... Uh, our output, power, and ground, wired it up here. Just check it with a multimeter. Uh, I happen to have an extra one of these laying around. I like to have these things. They're super handy for just random, you know, tests. 
Um, if you guys haven't used them before, if you take a look at the middle, you see right there in the middle, uh, that little round thing right there is your power, and then the ground is the uh, outer sheath right here. So if you're testing with the multimeter, that's your ground on the outside, and uh, your power is going to be right there, that plug. So if you look at this, um, power, ground. Cool. So just verify that with the multimeter. Super easy to do. And there you go. Once you get that all wired up, I mean, just plug it in. Turn on your USB battery pack, and your detector fires right up. Look at that. So, perfect. Now I can basically plug in any detector that I want, and uh, awesome for testing, for portability, for using it. Uh, if I'm not driving, if I'm going out to wherever for whatever reason, I now have a portable power source, which is awesome. Uh, oh, cool. So the battery power just dropped. It was at uh, four dots. It's now at three. Um, I'm really curious how long this battery pack would last. Uh, so we'll have to see. Um, this guy I've noticed he uses about five watts. Uh, I've got a little, uh, where is it? Little USB meter. I plugged it in and tested it and it was running here. I'll go ahead and show you while I describe it. Um, with this guy, I plugged it in. It uses about, uh, and this is just the V1. Other detectors may be a little bit different and I can always try with other ones. We'll let this guy fire up, and uh, it's going to be 5 volts, and then whatever current he needs. Um, so it should be about an amp or so when it's running. There we go. About 1 amp, and then about 5 watts. So hopefully that shows up. There we go. So that's the power that we're currently getting uh, on idle. We go ahead and trigger the V1. You'll see it jump anywhere from about 5 to 5.3 watts or so. Which is interesting, according to the V1 specs, it uses almost twice the power when it's at full alert. Uh, the one that I'm seeing, it uses only very, very, very slightly more, so don't know what that's about, but either way, it's about 5 watts of power, about an amp that we're pulling out of here, which is the same as charging like a standard cell phone or whatever. An iPhone can use up to 2 amps at 5 volts, the iPhone 6. The older ones run an amp, so it's like charging uh, an older cell phone um, and powering the radar detector. So this guy should be able to last for a long, long time, which is awesome. I should be able to get many, many hours out of this battery. Um, I've got a bunch of them. This is just one that I happen to like. It's an Anchor 16,000 milliamp hour battery pack. But anyways, as you can see, really awesome. Uh, I think the next step is uh, I want to be able to take this out and not worry about it getting banged around or hit or whatever. So I'll get some sort of enclosure for it to put it inside. Um, maybe get a better connector so I can plug in any USB port or, you know, solder this to the housing or whatever. But basically just get some sort of uh, permanent housing uh, for this guy. And then there we go, I'll have a way to now uh, plug in a USB battery pack, plug in any radar detector that I want, and I can now power it uh, wherever I am without requiring a car. So is it necessary? Not really, but fun, cool, awesome, and I've wanted to do this for a long time. So super excited, I finally got a way to get it done. Um, again, it's really easy to do, I just finally sat down to do it, you know? But anyways, I uh, wanted to show you all this. Uh, I'll put a link to the discussion on RDF about uh, you know, there's many, many different ways of doing this. You don't need this device. If you don't have a battery pack, there's maybe a little bit easier ways. We don't have to do this little middle step. So there's tons of really good ways that people have suggested. Um, I'll put a link to these guys on Amazon if you want to take a look too. Cool, you know, all the little different trinkets and doodads i got going on here. But anyways, there you go. I just wanted to show you a fun little project that I was working on tonight. How to, powder, or how to um, power a battery. Uh, how to power a radar detector using a battery pack. So... Cool, there you go. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.